Nations. So uh, thanks for coming on. Uh, we were just uh, kind of starting off with a heated topic, so we wanted to yes. go ahead and uh, this is the first the ever abstract transmission podcast. Oh yeah, this, this is great. <laughs> Thank you for uh, coming on and being our first yeah, guest. Thank you. We're, we're very excited to be doing this. Um, so uh, I will start out with the yeah. FMLA thing. Yeah. So uh, prior to us uh, getting on the air officially, we were talking about um, the FMLA program and how um, it can be used for good things if something happens and your company should support you. But there's a line to be drawn when the company suggests that you take it and then they can you for trying to, to put in the paperwork for it. So, mm, okay. um, but to, to correlate with that, um, the house today actually passed a paid family leave program that, uh, when I was a rep, um, last year we fought against because they, they call it, you know, paid family leave, but it's an income tax in New Hampshire, which we've been pretty proud not to have one. So they're trying to implement an income tax under the guise of another social program that we can't really afford to pay for. Oof. The the problem is, and at least I didn't read the bill for the new one, unfortunately, but um, the one that we that we um, did a year ago was was basically the idea that it would be a half percent from your paycheck every week that would involuntarily pay for this program that you would have to opt out. Uh, you can't opt into. You I mean you you know you're automatically opted into um, as an employee, which is kind of backwards Wait, because this would be now an income tax imposed on New Hampshire. Uh, this would be a uh, income tax imposed on New Hampshire, done by the state level, in a sense, right? So they they want to codify it in state law and say, now you will pay for this program instead of going to every employer and saying you have the option of paying for it, which they didn't give them the option of. So um, I don't know what the percentage was in the new bill, but the old bill was that they're going to take half a percent of your pay every week to pay for this new state program. Um, and we fought against it because it, it's an income tax, and they'll try to tell you it's not. But any tax on your income or your wages is an income tax. Absolutely. So it's like they don't understand economics right. at all. If you have to fill out a state return, mm -hmm. then it's an income tax. Am I correct? Right. I mean, and that's my assumption. There'd be no Absolutely. way around that without them being able to monetize your income by mm -hmm. finding out what your income is by said state tax. The or taxes or on on return rather right. Well, that so the. The taxes that we do pay uh, in this state, um, as as far as like our individual incomes, okay. is under um, RSA seventy seven, which covers all of the uh, taxes on interests and uh, dividends, as well as the uh, the business profits taxes and whatnot. So there are a lot of taxes that are imposed on us, you know, especially with property taxes, which is why it's so expensive, you know, to live up here. Yeah. Um, but we've never had an actual tax on our income as like on, like, like in our paychecks. Right. So that's what they're trying to, to do with, you know, putting in the, the pay family Just lease program. Just find other so. creative ways to get it out of us. And <laughs> it's, it's funny cause they say it's, it's under the guise of, you know, social safety nets and whatnot. But my, my thought of is, is like, if you're not doing it like on your own volition, then why is the state trying to force it on you? And that's why like my political views are essentially like, I don't want the state to force individuals to do things that, that, that they have the choice to do, right, um, which is why I'm pro-choice on everything mm -hmm. because it's, it's up to me, not the state, not like elected, you know, people in office to say what I can and can't do in my own life. So, and that includes yeah. what I pay for in my paycheck. Like the state has no right to my money, but you know, we've been under this system for as long as the 16th amendment has existed where a federal income tax exists. Uh, excuse me and um it's you know we they'd have to change it you know in the house and senate and congress and and then have it i have the states have the option to to have that choice but not many states you know don't have an income tax i think us in florida might be the only two i think there might be one more but i'm not yeah, i don't know it's very yeah. limited and yeah. i mean i think that's something that you know as being new Hamp somebody from new hampshire i mean we pride ourselves on and part of the Absolutely. reason why I wouldn't want to live outside of New Hampshire. I mean, there's times where I considered living outside of New Hampshire because of the cannabis laws and stuff because mm -hmm. of my own personal issues, trying to get away from opioids mm -hmm. and, and rely on, on cannabis and it has worked for me and I thank God for that because the opioids are garbage. It's a whole other conversation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I just think that it's, 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 it makes it more and more difficult when they kind of, we have this whole like guise of the live free or die state mm -hmm. but then they were the 
ocean i mean we're an island of prohibition and an ocean of you know of recreational use <laughs> all these different things that mm-hmm. are just we're not showing that aspect the, the, we um, have a lot of so the the people that that get elected to the house they're 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 boomers you mm-hmm. know so they have this idea that marijuana is a gateway drug and there's never been any study that can verify that kind of argument it's it's nonsensical and even our governor tries to tout that too because he's he's being bought and paid for by the by the police chiefs in the state yeah the 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 police chiefs Sucks. you know um, association is very powerful mm-hmm. and him being in support of cannabis would tank you know his next election because they hold that much sway over our governor you know and right um, it sucks that like more than sixty percent, I would say probably like seventy percent of our state wants you know, you know the recreational cannabis because it's our choice to to you know to use it or not. And plus, it gets it off the streets of the dealers too. I mean, you can open up a shop and go buy it in downtown, you know, and yep, and exactly. and you know what you're getting as opposed right. to just buying it from some guy off, off the street. Yeah, you have no Joe idea what kind of crap they're putting in there, you know. Right. <laughs> Could be you know. Mix with detergent to mask smell and all kinds of shit. You We're never know. Issues We're just getting ripped off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm, yeah. Any of that, dude. I mean, and it's so sketchy, like, uh, any of those circumstances, because then you're involving yourselves in the black market when those people probably also sell other types of harder drugs that you won't have anything to do with. Like, that's just, it's, it's, it's insane that that's the direction that um, I had been for so long, and now we're starting to adapt. Mm-hmm. We're changing. But uh, you've got somebody like Sununu, who I voted for. (laughs) I was like, hey, you know, I I do not want the alternative. And and I'm, you know, I'm pretty far to left on a lot of things. It's just, there's certain things I'm not, guns being one of them. Uh, And then the, I I was just really blown away that his whole thing was like the supporting of the medical marijuana aspect of Mm -hmm. it. He was all about, but then it's like, we go the other direction and it's like, okay, well, you said, well, you're not going to veto any anything it comes to because that's what the legislation supports. But now he's considered vetoing this. He's he's been he said it probably two or three times that that if that bill came to his desk that that you know he would he would strike it down. So it's so, completely hypocritical. Well, the, so all of our politicians and those kind of offices have been supportive of the medical cannabis program because it's a medical cannabis product. So like they, the the state can control it. So now we're lobbying. Right, so what we're trying to do, I actually co-sponsored, I, I co-sponsored the bill to legalize it outright in New Hampshire. Yeah. Um, the idea is that people can have home grows, um, they can you know kind of be their own supplier in a way, and the cannabis issue I think gets uh, misconstrued quite a bit because people think it's the idea of, of stoners you know sitting around getting high and eating Cheetos on their couch, but to me it's it's a it's another way out of you know getting out of heroin, mm-hmm. I mean cocaine. Yeah crack and those things are prevalent in new hampshire um in fact meth is actually um on the rise quite a bit you yeah, know especially the north country i did not know that when i was a corrections officer up in carroll county in Ossipi, um that was like like the big thing that people were struggling with it was it was heroin and meth and there are some meth labs out there that either haven't been found yet or they get yeah. found and they get taken out but like it's Holy everywhere shit. but you know those things happen because the state has the you know the idea that prohibition works it's never worked it's never worked and it's not gonna work it didn't work with alcohol no nope. and but they don't they don't see that like so that that you know constitutional amendment when that was enacted that gave birth you know to organized crime in, um in in america you know al capone made you know his empire based off you know the you know the alcohol trade underground and as long as you keep the drugs underground, that's how the cartels have power, and and you know, yeah. you know, and they can keep peddling their their crap in the in the country, you know, because the government is fighting a war that they can't win. Right. So instead of conceding and staying, individuals can have the the right to make their own choices. They they still, oh excuse me, who burps? <laughs> <laughs> I'm drinking uh, an 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 IPA, so I'm trying not to to be yeah, yeah. gross on on the air here, but. Um, you know, but as long as the state has the idea that that they should control the morality of of their of you know the citizens who live here, we're going to continuously have problems. Yeah, no, that, so. and that makes a lot of sense to me. I've always kind of had an issue with somebody telling you 
what you can and can't do with your body, whether it be suicide. And I know that's another fringe topic. No, but man. It's, it's like, it, it, if it, I'm sorry, but your right to live and your right to die is a personal freedom. And Absolutely. I, I don't believe that somebody really has a right to come in and say, hey, well, this is not anybody. Yeah, well, you know what? I'm sorry. It doesn't matter what your law is. It's not going to keep people from doing those things anyway. It's, it's oh, yeah. a mortal, you know, mortal value kind of uh, offset there where people are... are are trading what they really value versus mortality and mm-hmm. and really i mean unfortunately for some people they just really they don't want to live and i i, I mean that's a whole other animal but I, I think that the big concern when it comes to you know drug use is that it's like in general uh, i think that like and there's proof in other countries that if you legalize all drugs let people kind of unfortunately be at the control of their own devices mm-hmm. kind of things work themselves out natural selection comes in and well they've they've shown a lot of the harsh uh, realities uh, they've shown in in portugal when they uh d- you know they they completely um uh they they uh they they you know kind of opened the market for, for you know for the heart of drugs and and when they did that um all the rates of it of it um uh, you know uh uh, addiction to those drugs actually went down. Right. The the crime rates went down because then it's it's being controlled in some way, um, and you're not kind of left up to the market of like we don't know what's in this. So yeah. well, here's so, hey, have at it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Once yeah. have all of that money going into. Uh, these programs that treatment jail programs. people. Programs. It's going into treatment programs yeah, yeah. and people getting help, and and that's the same thing with the incar- incarceration system in this country versus other countries is that, you know, I know people are all like, oh, ooh, it's, it can't be soft. And, look, man, I'm not being all snowflake for the, but what we have right now doesn't fucking work. And there's more people that are in jail now than ever for nonviolent crimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, th- these institutions in which there's nothing but profit going to these private companies that, and this is where my gripes are with capitalism, <laughs> uh, but at the same time, is I, I think that there needs to be a balance between a lot of these powers, um, and this is where my, a lot of that, uh, problems that I have with certain aspects of capitalism come in is when you have free rampant, uh, people can just do whatever they want, um, mm-hmm. and they have these connections. Also, I mean, there's a lot of you know, there's a lot of uh, facets there. It's not just because of capitalism. It's also because of uh, the uh, outrageous um, uh, prison industrial complex. It's well, just, we, it's I mean, rampant on people's personal lives and civil liberties. We, what's a, a, a crazy statistic is that we have more people in our jails and prisons in this country than we do in the military. <sighs> and <sighs> if if you think about that... It's fucked. Under one yeah, percent of our of our country's population it's even serves charred. in the military, and we have over a million people over that who were in prison for nonviolent. Well, I mean, there there are a lot of nonviolent crimes, but you know some of them in there are the, those that are 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 are, are in there These, should be there. But, yeah, <laughs> but I mean, you know the the you know going to to jail because you have a controlled substance on you, quote unquote, isn't yeah. a real crime. You know, going to jail because. You know the little ID card in your pocket kind of expired by a day or whatever, oh, yeah. like stuff yeah. like that. They're 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 crimes against the state, quote unquote. But the state can't be a victim, so you know they're kind of enacting their own form of uh, you know uh, retribution for something that they can't really prove as a crime. But yeah. we keep voting for people that keep putting laws in place that do that to people, and we and we call it the land of the free. You know, it's 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 frustrating. Where I've been in the military for almost ten years, and I and I swore an oath to uphold the, the constitution of, of our country and our state, and I see it constantly being eroded by people who continuously send us to war. You know, that don't understand the you know the implications of their actions, and then we're the ones who, you know, get called all the names. We're the ones who get bashed on the internet, and we're the ones you know. Oh, yeah. It's it's always us who end up you know kind of being the victims of that i'm not i'm not playing that by any means i i actually you know i i picked uh, construction engineering you know, yeah in the army so i knew i wanted to learn a, a, a trade skill but for those who, who go in and, and combat roles i mean yeah it's it's i don't know man it's it's playing uh you know, playing a game of chance with your life, and I'm I'm not gonna do that. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you mentioned something earlier. Not that I'm, yeah. I, you know, I don't want to talk too much, but you mentioned something earlier about 
the state kind of banning suicide. I, I, I find that kind of kind of funny in a way because, um, you know... It's ironic, really. I mean, on the West but, Coast, yeah. they, they have laws where, you, you know, you can choose, you know, to medically die mm-hmm. if you, you know, are, are terminally ill and you don't want to, you know, prolong your own suffering. I actually was planning, if I got elected to my second term, um, mm-hmm. <coughs> oh, excuse me, um, to sponsor a bill to allow, um, like, uh, a, a, um, a, a uh, medically induced death, mm-hmm. you know, for those who are suffering. Terminal and um, Ill, yeah. I really yeah. wanted to, to sponsor that bill. I wanted that to, you know, kind of be my, my pet project because we're supposed to be that kind of state here. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have this idea, in, you know, in, that, in, 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 in our, you know, culture and society that's, that's you know, you know, that's uh, promulgated by by our our organized religious structures that says yeah. that, you know, oh my God, this beer, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, I know, right? Like it's your life, me. <laughs> you know, your life is only worth what we say it is. Right. So mm-hmm. if you choose to end your life, you don't have that choice according to them. You know, their you know their choice is to have you live at all costs, even if it's at you know the the cost of uh, of your suffering and your happiness i don't think that's fair yeah. and taxpayers yeah i mean uh, yeah, you know people there's are there's a whole other weight to that <laughs> as, as, as as shitty as that sounds i'm yeah. just saying that like at the same time you're looking at it from that perspective is like people don't also they don't want to live they right. don't want to contribute they don't want to be here it's a it's yeah, a strong sucks, opinion but to have but i but i do truly believe yeah. that if you don't value your life then you shouldn't be forced to to live it and yeah. It's a hard truth, you know, for a lot of people to understand that. I'm, I'm not saying, you know, go fucking kill yourself. I'm, I'm not yeah. saying that. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> is that, you know, get help. Obviously, please get help. I mean, go talk to, you know, to somebody. There are yeah. are, are plenty of phone numbers to yeah. call, and there's, you know, people that that do care about you. And like, yeah. if you killed yourself, I mean, you're you're not doing them any favors. But yeah. I mean, in the well, in the idea, we're absolutely miserable. They're dying. Like, it's, right. it's insane to force somebody to stay suffering because of arbitrary laws based on usually religion unfortunately mm-hmm. it's it's just rooted in because jesus and that sucks it <laughs> yeah. just it really but doesn't help anybody and, and that's why the the pro-life you know side is as such a, a, a strong voice in our politics is because it's being spurred on by the idea that you know all of our human lives are valuable to to some unseen god and mm-hmm. and th- i mean oh man we so can talk about that for hours care, <laughs> the fuck man that, that was it that me and dude, yeah we were talking about that earlier the uh, <laughs> it's absolutely brutal the drowning. it's true it's, yeah. it's so completely i know it's not like a, a great argument but it's 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 prompting the conversation where it's like do you care more about a pregnant female who's carrying an unborn fetus than you know than you do about the you know the you know, kids, kids that are literally have nobody 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 and they're mm. in the the state That's systems rough. for years until they age out it's and crushing. then and then they turn into unproductive human beings because they never had that structure in their lives where, where people told you like we you know care about you and that you're somebody and that and that you can be anything they don't have that and people you know they care more about kind of their own you know, nuclear family, and I get that. That's the you know, like you know, we all yeah. Been, that's a we've been procreating for you know thousands of years. But I'm saying that like <laughs> in in our political system where these kids are suffering in these foster homes with nobody to you know to care for them, it's it's a sad reality yeah. that that people need to understand that like there's more to just the idea of giving birth. It's like you know you have to love that kid after it's born too. You know. Oh yeah, for sure. It's very important for development. You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean. He, he had yeah. experience in the foster care system when he <laughs> yeah was I moved around a little bit when I was like twelve mm-hmm. you know thirteen or whatever and about a year and a half or so and there's, there's a couple of places I went and you know structure for sure you know they wanted to get some structure in but you know just a paycheck you know yeah, it's <laughs> basically it's, it's sad that's what I got out of it it's like shut the fuck up and yeah paycheck that's fucked and up. and some of them were like you know I'm sure nice. the good ones too but oh, the, this total you know but it's that balance like you're gonna find the good and the, the bad <laughs> because of a broken system like yeah. any system unfortunately so uh, you're still in, in contact with your parents or no um uh, my mom passed oh, i'm uh, sorry 2010 no problem and uh i actually talked to my dad uh he lives in gloucester i believe so we'll text back and forth you know like, hey, what's going on here? down the highway <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy yeah but yeah, that's yeah, pretty I, much I, I grew up in a single parent home and I never knew you know, knew my father and it's you know, it's we talk about so much about the masculinity problem in this country, you know, quote unquote, but 
you know, people don't understand that, you know, for men, like, not having that, uh, that two-parent system where, where you're getting two different sides of, of the yeah. parenting, uh, you know, dichotomy, like, you know, we, I mean, you're a product of, you know, of your environment, so if you don't have a strong male person to look up to, like your father, <laughs> you know, yeah. there's there are some insecurities there and I, and I always grew up, you know, thinking I wasn't good enough and I had something to prove and I, that, yeah, and that carried over that. into my adulthood, which is why I've been doing the things that I do in my life. I always, you know, feel like I have something to prove, you know, yeah. and, and I've, I struggle with pride because, uh, I'm, I'm too prideful now to admit that either I'm wrong ab- about something or that, yeah. uh, I don't know enough about something. Cause it's, it's always like, I wasn't good enough, you know, the first time. So it's like, I don't want to, admit that so but that that stems from like i didn't have the father structure in my life to, to teach me those values too so yeah. it's like you know people are just afraid to be honest with, with you know uh, yeah, totally. with themselves and i like doing these podcasts because you get the opportunity to talk about these issues and people can listen mm-hmm. and say wow i identify with that right yeah i'm not the only motherfucker yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm not the it's only great. one who's like wow my dad you know didn't show up in my life or my mom is a an addict or whatever and it's yeah. like you know i didn't have that but i'm saying like you know yeah. like you know you know my mom is 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 the best person you know i, I could have asked for to raise me my, yeah. you know, my mom is a you know an absolute rock awesome. and um her husband is uh he got diagnosed with stage four colon cancer jesus sorry about that man yeah within the last couple of weeks so it's it's That's been really it's been hard with that because like i've never really dealt with a lot of death in my personal life my um my my ex's uh mom passed away from breast cancer like two years ago Jesus. and my daughter has never dealt with it and we've been trying to get her into counseling and you know it, that and coupled with the fact that she's a preteen almost you know so mm. she's got this hormone issue where she just cries for no reason now and it's like yeah. i'm trying to figure out how to deal with that and like you know being a dad is tough work man I, I love being a dad but it's like i'm learning as i go and, and trying to understand my, you know my kids and it's 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 tough when it's like you don't know how to explain how someone dies you know to them and 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 why you know those things happen and and it's like you know you know i don't know i have no idea (laughs) it's tough (laughs) right that was the hardest thing in the world for me explaining it to my uh, my son same yeah i had to explain it to you guys can relate he has a daughter yeah and she might (laughs) she's probably going to be back here pretty soon with a friend (laughs) they went for a walk downtown at the middle so it's like like you sit there and and you know you cry as well because it's like I don't yeah. know what to say but I'm just just gonna hold you and 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 tell yeah. you that I'm not going anywhere and and yep. things are are you know they will be you know like you know they it will, will be will get better it's definitely. the hardest thing in the world to watch your kid go through that oh it's it's, it's awful brutal. it's the worst especially yeah, when it, when, when they're so prevalent in their lives too you yep. know my mm-hmm. my daughter's grandmother was was a huge potter for life you know and and to lose that and then to watch her die and suffer it was it was horrible. Yeah. And, you know, thinking that my mom is going through that now, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I have no idea, like, what to do That's to tough. help them. You know, it's right. like, we can only hope that the, that the treatment works and that mm-hmm. we can get through this, you know. You know. Yeah. And that's sure. that's the thing you get to stay, stay positive, and that's not everything. Like my mom, my mom passed away. It's it's crazy. Like his mom passed away from cancer. My mom passed away from cancer when I was yeah. twenty one, and she was diagnosed. And then like they gave her five to ten years to live, and then it was like a year later she died. It was like wow. boom, mm. and she had cervical cancer. It spread to her lungs and to her wow. her brain, and yeah. it was like <clears throat> you know harsh radiation therapy. And the one thing I wanted to try was the cannabis one, because the funny thing is that we're reading now is we're finding that cannabis actually impacts growth of cancer cells, it does. CBD, and all, which is it, nuts because that was fringe conspiracy theory. Ugh bullshit for a long time that now we're finding that the american cancer society is putting this on their website that there are studies that are legit showing that it's impacting cancer growth so it's just like you think about those things how many people are going to be impacted by this weird prohibition that had we not had it because of some racist bullshit from the 1930s and some weird thing with the logging industry in Maine, <laughs> you know, that they basically dominated the paper industry to take over and say no. And they use that and some racism to make shit happen. And they got, voila, you got rid of marijuana. When alcohol, they allowed to become, you know, once again, uh, you know, legal, which I, I'm okay with that. I think prohibition of anything stupid. But then they released this, okay, they're like, oh, alcohol is legal again. Marijuana is real dangerous when in reality, obviously alcohol to take into these extremes is far 
Well, the alcohol works. I'm drinking, uh, I mean, it, 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 you know, it powers a drink. You know, I mean, you know, I'm an entire, uh, you know, yeah. uh, the, oh my god, entire I cannot bottle. talk today. Yeah, like every day, then yeah. it would fucking kill me. Right. Yes. But, uh, but I smoke some weed every now and then to alleviate, you know, stress and anxiety and and to deal with the, you know the you know the ailments from from chemo treatments and you know and all of yeah. a sudden you're a criminal and I'm sure that that you know um I'm I'm I'm, I'm yeah, it's definitely you guys saw the the video of that that uh, cancer patient being searched um b- b- yes uh, the cops in his um, in his room and yeah. I was like aghast I was like you've got to be kidding me yeah. like this dude is going to die from cancer and you're searching his room for weed like oh, no. what the fuck and and people are like oh people. you know not all cops are bad fuck that no there are some shitty fucking cops out there and i'll be honest like i don't like police because they do shit like that they enforce bad laws yep. and as long as they swear to uphold bad laws i will not respect their authority over my life well the problem more so is there's an expectation of crime there's a quota, right? I mean, is it not a, some sort of a guideline of expectation out of these officers that they have to expect so much crime to happen because it's yeah. just natural for human beings to commit that crime? So that leaves no room for society to better itself. That's just, this is the expectation of crime and it's going to happen. And ultimately, I mean, I'm sure, uh, no, all cops say that there's no quota, obviously. I'm sure there probably isn't. And it's more complex than that. And these guys put their life on the line. I, you know, like, I, I get it. But there are other aspects of personal civil liberties and the fact that it's like, they're there to serve and protect, yet they're pulling you over and running your plates just because they, they can. They wanted to, yeah. And then they go, "Well, that's interesting. You, you, uh, you're a cannabis patient. Uh, you have anything on you we should hmm. know about? <laughs> all this shit. None of your business, officer. Right. <laughs> I'll be on my way now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then, they, 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 then when she, well, I don't answer questions. You go anywhere in that direction, then it becomes they're going to push back. So mm-hmm. as long as you know what you're doing and you can get out of that. You feel very confident that a lot of times you can get out of the converse, confrontation with a I, police officer yeah. if you ask for a, a supervisor or whatever. I have but, been saying ugh. for a, a long time that every time you, you have any interaction with police officers, you get it on camera. Yeah. Because if they know that they're going to be on camera and, and they know that, that it can be used in court, they will be by the book as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Where if they know that you're just some, you know, ignorant uh, Joe Schmo on the road, like. They'll do whatever they can to get their way because that's like how they were trained, and that's also that you know. But why? Yeah. Like, what is so important to them that they're not solving any real problems Power. by busting some kid no. for pot? You went five miles like over <laughs> the speed limit. Now we're gonna pull you out of your car and, and have my dog bite you in the ass. Like, yeah. <laughs> like how is that? Helping anything, <laughs> right? Because and, and I have rights, <laughs> goddammit, You know, right? And it's the whole concept of safety. Yeah. But now you're gonna put me in safety in, in harm of my own personal safety because of safety. Like it just because of, of their perspective yeah. that that you could be doing something wrong. Like we don't we don't police our society and like what you could be doing wrong. Nazi. Like, you're up. This isn't papers, please. Like I, I don't give a shit. <laughs> Fuck off. Yeah, right. With your job, like I don't care. It's like it's Ugh. like the sales guy at the fucking store coming up to. Well, I've got to meet this this quote. I don't give a fuck. Fuck off. Yeah. Like it's not my problem. Like I mean, you got your job to do. You know. I, I, I want and my. That was the hardest thing about about being <laughs> in Conquer when I was a rep for the last two years was having those kind of views. And I mean, I didn't stifle them, but it was like I I, I had to constantly. Um, try to to explain to to people why I feel the way that, that I do about authority, and it's like I understand the the irony of being elected to public office and being someone in authority. But to me, also it was repu- like <laughs> elected to Republican public office at first. But I initially. but I did that because I felt at the time, well, we didn't have third parties that were you know that were eligible for the ballot at at that time. But when I got elected, I I, I had to pick a party that I felt the most alignment with, yeah. quote unquote. But it was like even then I felt dirty about it because mm-hmm. um, hey, it wasn't way. really my you lose lose either way, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> but but I got elected and I was able to you know to do some some pretty cool things and I'm yep. very proud of, of what I've done. I voted against every tax and spending you, bill and, and I'm proud of what you did. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy. <laughs> it's great. Like the, I getting and, rid of the huffing thing with it. All of a sudden, <laughs> oh fucking God. finally, bravo. Yes. <laughs> I thought that would go away. No, so I know how like stupid that seemed like when i was going to to committee to to fight for that bill no, but it was dude, like it makes sense it's a stupid law 
I had people come to jail for it. And I was like, why are you here? That's you can buy ridiculous. everything in a hardware store or, you, or Staples. And it's like, gonna how are you a criminal? <laughs> that's it. How much money goes into that shit? Yeah. That doesn't need to go into that shit. How many wasteful spending... It, it, well, and this is my thing with social programs, right? I get you're against social programs in a lot of aspects, but only from the aspect that's wasteful spending, and we don't want the government involved in general in our lives, and mm-hmm. I understand that. But when they indefinitely are, because it's just reality that we live in now, I would rather those social programs go into things that make fucking sense, not my roads. Such <laughs> bullshit. My roads. <laughs> my roads. That's always like the, the thing. You it's, know? it's like our, <laughs> our quintessential, like, you know, meme that we have on Facebook. Everyone's always like, well, who would build the roads? And it's like, (laughs) how do you think roads were built before we had taxes? Like, we literally have a privatized (laughs) space company flying NASA. (laughs) You know shit. Seriously. (laughs) That's, that's peak capitalism, bro. It is. Hey, and that's why I have the appreciation for capitalism. And I think Uh, that's important that we have a balance between both. This is my thing. I'm never a pro socialism. Socialism has never worked ever. Ever. It's a terrible never ideology. Worked. It is terrible ideology. <laughs> However, social programs instated in an environment where you have a strong capitalist society, I don't think is a bad thing. Look at these. You know, I love how everybody always goes, socialism, look at look at Denmark and Sweden. I go, oh, oh God. It's more Ooh. capitalism They're capitalist than countries with strong social, social programs. programs. Right. And that's it. And I don't... See, that's where I think they, they do it right. And I think that that's... If we could adapt that... But they also way, but pay we, the highest taxes in the world. Yeah, yeah, like they, they, they do. do. And I, but how much do we pay in healthcare? And I think that's Sanders' oh, that's point. Yeah. And that's Sanders' point with the whole, like, okay, medical care. Fall. But the problem is that he's not realizing, and this is where I disagree with Bernie Sanders. And I'd love to have a conversation. It's like, you don't see that as like, okay, that's fine for four years. What happens when you're gone in four years or eight years? Right. And it's, then we're back to... It's unsustainable. It's un, it's. The entire American political system is unsustainable. is unsustainable. Well, look, I mean, you you know, from FDR all the way to you know to LBJ, their their idea was to create their perfect society, and they did that by implementing Social Security and the Medicare programs, and all that that did was take those individual choices from you and place them in the power of the government. But you know. Um, by saying that that you will involuntarily pay for these now, they are insolvent. Right mm-hmm. now, they will they they will collapse and they will collapse our economy. So their concept failed, basically. It did, but but people you know keep thinking. It's a good that idea though. If if Social Security <laughs> worked how it was supposed to, then Intentions. all of us would have an account with some yeah. money in it every yeah. every year. But we don't. There is nothing in our account because they they don't actually exist. Yeah. They they take that money and they pay for everything else. So like, right. so what we pay in our paycheck is just you know to sustain it by law that that's it, you know. And and, and in, in, there's no proof that they we're gonna have that. There's no guarantee to any of that. They're just like don't it's just coming out because you're American, right? But you may not have it. The Sanders not, we're not healthcare for it. all thing that people have been touting on both the left and the right, honestly, yeah, is. It, it, it would cost more than the national debt to pay for, and we don't have that kind of. It would cost trillions and well, trillions how much of money dollars. Does it cost the current country now the way we're living off? Like just from a perspective, when I was working at Barron's before uh, I was let go, um, I had health insurance that I was paying two hundred and sixty dollars a week for for myself, uh, my wife Gavin, and. Then ultimately, if I had any you know issues, I, I'd still be paying out of pocket. Mm-hmm. And then it's like there's still some things that weren't covered. It's like, in my opinion, like I'm not like I don't know. You know what? Maybe Medicare for all not going to work. Free social, free healthcare for everyone probably not realistic. I get that, but. Do I? F- I don't feel like I should pay two hundred sixty-seven dollars a fucking. Week I have your solution. And then not have. I, I feel like I shouldn't have to pay shit after that. Uh, I actually have the answer for you. It's really easy. What's that? We ready? Yep. Get the government out of healthcare, and by doing that, you eliminate all the red tape that makes insurance. Uh, look, if if you get rid of all the regulations that that they place on the on the healthcare industry, you completely eliminate insurance altogether. Yeah. And by doing that, you go back to a direct primary care system, like some places are already doing. Cut out yeah. the middleman, and you pay. F- you know, fee for you know for you know, uh, I'm, you, no, sorry, uh, no, you pay, you pay fee for service, and 
you know, it wouldn't cost forty thousand dollars to have a baby anymore. Yeah. Because right. they, they, you know, so they charge all of that because they know that the insurance companies will pay for it. If you get rid of the insurance companies by getting the government out of health care, you make all that affordable again. Okay. Instead of taking money from other programs or paying more in taxes to pay for it, you change the already existing structure. I've been telling people yep. that for years now, but but they don't want to see it that way. So the theory, though, is that, that these companies aren't trustable and that they're all, all unfettered capitalism allows them to do whatever they want and ultimately... But the insurance companies already do because of that. Well, and, and I agree. And my <laughs> other part is like, so you want the government to do it? You mean the guys have been hiding everything from the us VA, forever? It... <laughs> and the guys that are terrible at spending money and the guys that really <laughs> don't really... So, yeah, no, I get it. And I agree. And that, my thing is, it's just like, if we're going to be spending that money somewhere, where is it going to be spent? And do I really want it to be going to bombs? Or do I want it to go of course not. for looking for inter- interplanetary objects? Which, in my opinion, as much as I'm a, a very... Cap, you know, climate change is super important to me. Interplanetary objects are far more important. And <laughs> my as wife is an environmentalist, s- so I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, this is a whole thing that I'm just like, why are we not looking at the skies? It's like, yeah, we need to stop with the fucking being ir- irresponsible with pollution. But even more so, if our fucking moon, if our satellite got hit but an interplanetary Oof. object, it would turn Oof. the moon into dust and that would rain into our planet and the atmosphere would turn to fire and it would roast all of us alive. Yay! <laughs> the so apocalypse like, is here! It, it, it's just like, <laughs> so nobody, nobody gives a shit kidding. about that, but you know, you're right. It's like, hey, no more problems. I feel like I'm, I've been talking over you. I'm sorry. Like, I want to hear your perspective on this. I've, I've heard Mark, like, you know, to death. Yeah, no yeah, worries, yeah, yeah. No worries. <laughs> He's, oh, the whole like apocalypse thing, or? no, <laughs> <laughs> like healthcare or you know, you know, paying healthcare. for all our social programs. And I'm honestly, I'm I'm learning a lot just listening. Okay, I'm um, just Best thing know, about I don't really have like a, very a solid. With, uh... I'm just really trying to figure it out at this point. So. so I'm I'm sure by now people probably have no idea like who I am. So. I, uh, my name is Brandon Finney. Yes. Uh, I am from Rochester, <laughs> New Hampshire. Yes, that that's got to be put like in the beginning of this podcast. Yeah. But because we're brand new, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. Um, I served I served uh, two years in the house. Um, I'm, 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 um, in the in the, the the state of New Hampshire, and um, I'm very public uh, about my you know political stances and opinions, and and um, I'm kind of unique in a way, not to to puff myself up or anything no, but like I agree. um taking a lot of pride in being someone who's been able to give a voice to people you know um and, and, and you know like uh like um in the the sphere of uh, you know you know the liberty um you know the, you know you know oh my god blah, 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 the no liberty it's... movement <laughs> um as well as the atheist community yeah um actually when i was still a republican you know prior to switching parties that was what kind of got me my name out there was by saying like hey like we don't need all these religious ideas to do anything in life (laughs) or society or government so i was like yeah like we don't need this and everyone was like oh my god a republican atheist this is such a weird like chameleon like (laughs) unicorn thing and it was like no i'm just someone who can separate the ideas of what i personally believe about our existence and about government policy and like I think a lot of people can't, they, that line is so blurred now that like people associate your political party with your religious beliefs, you know, where, where the Republican party is considered the Christian right. And it's like, I didn't want anything to do with that That's at all. Like libertarians <laughs> yeah. because there's such a spectrum in libertarianism yeah. that gives you that flexibility to be kind of who you are. And mm-hmm. ultimately the focus is liberty. Mm-hmm. And just being having the right to be an American, basically, it's about the individual. You the know, individual, like like not you being infringed upon. You are a sovereign individual. Or you are in control of your life, and right. no state, you know, like agency or governing authority can tell you who you are or what you can and cannot do with your body, with your life, your property. Right. We yeah. literally fought a fucking war over it, <laughs> and now we're our own country, and we, and we have been for two hundred and fifty years. And it's like we forget that. So, like, that's why we're arguing about socialism again. Yeah. Because right. we, we've forgotten about, like, where we came from and what the founders had intended for but, our society. I mean, but I do think that a part of our society is rooted in some of those Marxists. No. You know, economic. No, community can be voluntary. 
No, no, I agree. When you I make agree. community a, a involuntarily, thing, and that's where it's fascism. I, I, get, I get it. I, but at the same time, you still have those those people <laughs> that, um, I, and I agree, but you have those people that don't agree. A part mm-hmm. of society, this, we also have the super far right evangelicals. Oh. We have all those part of society that we don't necessarily get along, but we got to coexist with them. And that's the thing that becomes difficult and why Everyone, I think that those, those left perspectives can be helpful because they bridge a little bit of that. Um, I believe that yeah. everyone has the right to believe in what you want. You don't have the right to force others to, you know, you know, to believe that. Perfect. Yeah. And yeah. and I also believe that your beliefs are not free from criticism. You know, we all have our 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 like our, 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 like, um, like individual ideas about <laughs> why and how we came to be. But ultimately, like if you believe in killing people for not believing and 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 how you believe yeah. like islam for instance why should we tolerate that now i'm tolerant of people believing in what they want i'm not tolerant of people trying to use violence to enact that against others yeah and any so, religion in general any anything that would drive someone to hurt somebody else is not acceptable like the mosque the the shooting in new, you know, in uh, new zealand like <sighs> there's been such polarizing opinions on it because the guy like openly said i did this to make shit harder in America. Like, he openly trolled all of us and in the media by saying, I shot 49 people just to make America shittier because he knew that gun control, you know, would would go up and that people would say, we got to ban all the guns and it's it's all a big game to these people. But, mm. but what stems from that is, you know, crazy immigration policies in other countries and the idea that... If we just let everybody in willy nilly without any like you know vetting process, then it's like, you know, culture will will be great again. And it's like, I don't, I'm, oh, I can't stand the white supremacist movement. I think it's ridiculous. It's awesome. And it's like, who the fuck are you? Like, you're just a pale guy. Like, who cares? Yeah. But there's something to be said Seriously. about. But but that's like what you know like where a lot of that you know uh, that comes from. My argument is like, unfettered immigrant. Um. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm very like immigration. Yes. Ooh. Um, th- those policies they, they got to be checked, man. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. they they. Oh, I agree. I think yeah, I agree. that like Definitely. like um like you know the the free movement of people is important and it's it's our right to do so. Mm-hmm. But I think that as long as we believe in the concept of countries and governments, that we have to look at how those policies affect everyone as long as we're putting down those imaginary lines in the same right then we kind of have to I've actually them. I've actually argued to go back to, you know to you know to the Ellis Island um, immigration system where I heard where that it's like hey on Facebook. I want to make yeah, sure that you are who you say you are okay like you're free to, you know to be here and you know I don't believe in in the border control units I don't believe in any of that I mean I I think it's I think it hurts people um and I think the reason why that guy shot up the mosque was was to make an anti-islam statement but was also to say that like immigration is a bad thing i'm not saying it's a bad thing but i'm saying yeah. that, that like you know our policies in america they're it's not working it's, it's not very efficient and yeah. we need to look at, at ways to make it better so i yeah, i've, I've sure. argued to go back to that you know system where that's how a lot of us got here you know yeah. you know like all the uh, you know the irish got here um, th- you know, and, you know, and, and that's why New England is as an Irish area is because yeah. they all came through that that part of entry, and and um, we got like way, and I like I've talked about a bunch of different things. Ooh, so I want to. That's so all right. I brought up the the Abstract shooter to say right. Yeah, that's, <laughs> a, yeah. that's what this I, shows off. <laughs> I brought up the shooter to say one thing about Islam was to say that like if you criticize Islam in any way, like even after a tragedy. Like, you have all these things thrown at you, uh, like, you're the bad person for saying, well, I mean, people are prompted to do bad things by other bad things. And, you know, the other part of it, by saying that, like, immigration is bad by those who claim that, I would never say that. But I would say that government policy can be bad. And that's why we'd, we'd have to go back and say, how can we make this system better and fair for everybody? Yeah, because and, this is a mess that yeah, they got going on. Right absolutely. Here. And, and kids and all that. But it was a mess before. I'm not going to put that on Trump. That was a mess before the system. Yeah. He just enacted 
the political mess it was in. I am, I am not, like, a big Trump guy at all, and I think of this no, whole I wall know. idea as ridiculous and nonsensical, <laughs> but, like, completely but I think that it started a conversation about the immigration problems that we do have, where our system is completely unfair, it's biased. Uh, it didn't just con- start the conversation, it force-fucked the conversation. Well, <laughs> right into the, he wants to spend life. $25 billion of our money to build this damn thing, so it'll be, it wait, wait, we have a right one, to say. Two, three. Oh, well, yeah. Dude, what happened to Mexico paying for it? <laughs> the fuck? That shit went right out the window. Right. He's, but that's the thing. He's he's a salesman, man. He's just... Yep. He, get him in, get him out. Get him in, get him out. Get him in, get him out. Get him out. Get my paycheck. And I quit. Yep. It, like every salesperson I've ever met at Sears. <laughs> <laughs> when I worked at Sears, it's just like in the get him in, get him out. They work there for... Oh, I'm bumping on my fucking mic. So I, 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 I got criticized in my party because I've been, been saying kind of, you know... Th- you know, there are a lot of people that believe in open borders and like, I get the idea and I understand it, but from a political, you know, perspective, it's, it's not going to work. Like we have to have some kind of policy in place for as long as our structures exist. And a lot of people would say, well, as long as welfare state exists, you can't just open the borders because then you're going to collapse our, 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 um, economic systems by having them apply for all the benefits that we well, get that we wrong sh- there i mean that makes sense <laughs> it does make mm-hmm. sense but like you're you're like you know criticized and name called and you're called like a, a bigot and nazi and, and like i've got that thrown at me and i'm like like the least of that and, you know, no, no, and i'm yeah. like how the fuck are you oh, gonna dude, call I me saw that? that shit online and i it's went to bad. People i couldn't believe like, it i was like, like my own that's party serious <laughs> bullshit yeah I'm like, that's fucking not accurate at all i have never said anything bad about somebody based on the color of their skin like they can help that like that that's right. ridiculous yeah. I, I said something bad about so... government policy and about the actions of individuals sure yeah, yeah, yeah. and about but... you know about like structures that exist that only hurt people sure like the catholic church for instance like they're an mm-hmm. abomination on on society mm-hmm. but Human am i calling for the bombing of the pope no <laughs> no but i do think at the same time to be fair he individually is trying to change that i've noticed i've noticed um not that it's it, 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 too little too late. Priests are still fucking kids, you know, <laughs> yeah. and they're still sweeping on the rug. <laughs> no, no, right, it's good. <laughs> too little too late, uh, asshole. But yeah, I, I get it. And and I, and I agree with you because I'm not a, a religious person. I've always been from the, the the perspective that, you know, kind of agnostic, but I'm not really, I guess I'm more atheist because science is the, I want, I want facts and I want, I want it right in front of me kind of so, thing, which is my struggle with the alien thing. To go, you know, some background, you know, for for people that might hear this, is that uh, you and I, Mark, have have man, we, you know, gone back since high school. And it's actually, true. like when you first met me, I was a big Christian, and I know. we argued about that because I, I used wild. to get made fun of so bad for that. And it was like, well, that's how I grew up. Yeah, yeah. No, really. I, you know, I was raised. You know, my mom is a a very big Christian, and mm-hmm. you know, I kind of grew up by going to youth groups, and you know, that's how I got my sense of community. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, that's that's important definitely sense of community whatever absolutely religion, and right. that's perfect you know that you know we had and i think those are the support. positive aspects of religion and i will say there yeah. are positive aspects because i grew, grew up in actually uh <laughs> irish catholic <laughs> well right. it's there's, there's not too many positive things about that right. sorry all you <laughs> irish catholic assholes out there <laughs> your religion sucks um and i hate it <laughs> because it made my life terrible for a long time so I appreciate you people if you're nice, but if you're not, <laughs> fuck you. So when I didn't become an atheist until I was like 24 or 25, and I'm almost 31 now, it took me a long time to understand scientific theory. It took me a long time to understand um, the ideas of evidence. And um, I read a lot of you know Christopher Hitchens. I read a lot of Sam Harris. Um, I read a lot of books that taught me something about how we view our realities and i my mind i mean i've i've always starts you know I've, i always have a you know a a, a a thirst for knowledge that that's something I, I know that about you know which is why i've got a, a huge collection of books at, at home i i, I always want to know things yeah. yeah um so that's why i've 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 changed my beliefs about you know the the ideas of what christianity teaches as opposed to you know what i know what i think to be true and you know I mean, it factual reality right and Sorry. it's like we don't have to have a purpose to exist we can we could just be an we can just be here yeah. yeah but we but we are the progenitor uh, the 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 progenitors the progenitors 
<laughs> Dude, no, no, wait, wait. The the progenitors. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of <laughs> of our of our own path. Yeah. And I believe that we can give our own lives purpose without having some external force give that for you. Yeah. So that's why we can just exist and also be good people. We don't have to have purpose. Yeah. We, you know, we don't have to matter. Well, that's the whole thing with morality right. that bothered me about religion is like, well, without religion, you can't have morality in almost every that's, aspect. That's bullshit. That's, that's fucking yeah. insane. Bullshit. Total bullshit. My son <laughs> is completely moral, and he's never been rela- raised with a, a, a lick of religion. And might I add, he also believes in God, and he didn't get that from me or Kayla because we're both atheists for the most part. For all intents and purposes, she's an atheist, and I'm more agnostic, but we've never talked about God at all. And he picked yeah. it up a little bit. I go, look. Everybody can believe what they believe, and I'll support yeah. you when you're believing. That's great that you you're supportive about that. You never, ever force your opinion or belief on somebody else because it borderlines uh, your relationship with that person. Yeah. It's unacceptable, and it's rude, really. I mean, yeah. I, I just don't think there's any necess- necessity nowadays. I think that you can get past those things. And, and that's the thing that, like, as much as, like, Ben Shapiro, love him or hate him, I do appreciate when it comes to the discussion about like trans uh, transgender issues and whatnot. He doesn't believe that individuals should be forced to uh, by law or anything like that to address people by their pronouns or whatever they want to be called. Or at the same time, he would do that if he was out to dinner with that person or something. Out of respect and in 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 a in a yeah politic pol- polite aspect like yeah. I, I understand what he's saying there is that whether you agree with somebody or not is irrelevant but how you treat them is 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 done on a personal level and you don't need a law to tell you to do that you can step in and do it yourself voluntarism and all that mm-hmm. I think is important I think the big thing that I gathered from that is that like whether you agree with somebody you can still have a civil conversation with them but you don't. When you start to tell somebody that they have to mm-hmm. address somebody a certain way, or they have to think a certain way, then you're impeding on their ability to think for themselves and speak for themselves. Yep. And that's the first amendment for a reason. So that's where my whole thing with that is. Is like at the same time, I'm I'm I've read a lot of science uh, where there's uh, there's a lot of gray area in gender issues now. It's not as is is binaries people think it has been at the same time at the same time science is science but yep. when we talk about climate change when we go science is a fact we can never say science is settled though because no, you can't, you because can't science play. is the study of the world around us and so if you it's know objective. things are constantly changing including our climate you know the earth has been changing including its climate for evolution. millions of years oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's like we can't claim that our climate changing is directly correlated to our existence on Earth, we've probably had some, you know, something to do with some of the erosions that we've seen in the ozone. No, it's the and rapidity getting... that's happening—that's a concern. So I've always been this. This I was used to be on the other side of this. This is like you were with uh, Christianity and religion. I was on uh, climate change and global warming. I'm a strong advocate uh, for the belief that for a long time global warming was simply a hoax perpetrated to generate money for companies like. Greenpeace and stuff like that. So when that guy, who is a co-founder, says what he says, it's not a hundred percent inaccurate, and I understand that. Michael Crichton's entire perspective on global change is that when it wasn't happening, but if he was alive now, and I guarantee you, he's he was a medical doctor. The proof of uh, what's happening with the climate isn't that it's going up; it's that all of a sudden it's spiked, and it's mm-hmm. in a dangerous aspect that. In 30 years, that we could be at the point where the planet could be uninhabitable if we don't make any drastic changes. But then, but yes. then to go the climate change argument, the argument is that well, we need government to enact policies to make those changes. And it's no, like, well, we don't. We're only one country, so it's Tesla's like proof of this. <laughs> I don't. I don't agree with with the idea that you know our Congress and Senate should pass bills that makes it harder for us to live by saying, well. You have to do X, Y, and Z, and the Earth will be saved. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. So, I think we should be Earth conscious, absolutely. But I think there's that line be- with voluntary action and government force, and it's like you can't force things to happen. It's so not going to work. You don't that, think that, that way. You, this is the this is my problem with that. Is like they, it's like murder, right? When you attack the planet directly, you're impacting everybody. 
So there has to be some sort of like step in line where somebody goes, and, and this is hypothetical. I'm not saying there does. I'm just saying this is for arguments purposes mm-hmm. uh, that somebody has to step in and go, we've got to protect the planet. You know, we've got to step in and, you know, because what about the people that don't give a fuck and that don't believe it and all of the Bible thumpers that are just like, fuck the planet. There's like, a lot Jesus of people who do believe that. Yeah. And Jesus. Because Jesus. Jesus. He's just going to save everybody. <laughs> I mean, this guy's a rock star. He's also white. Definitely not Middle Eastern. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm going to be dead anyway and Jesus is going to come back and resurrect me. So, like, why should I care about throwing my plastic in the ocean? You know, well, I get that. That's, <laughs> so it's just like, but, but then huzzah. it's like, so uh, the, the house, you know, they, they passed a bill to ban straws. Like, is that a sensible solution to our problems? No. No, but straws are a fucking <laughs> scourge on the environment. They're horrible. But I agree with you. Making a law is... We a, should have a law, and, and that should solve everything. Yeah, that people believe that, though. Yeah, yeah because <laughs> laws have solved everything else before, including gun violence. No. Gun <laughs> violence <laughs> and, and prohibition... <laughs> They're the, so. you know, they're they're the same policy ideas as, so, as, as, as climate change. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna play the devil's advocate here. Here we go. Send um, it. Uh, <laughs> so you think murder should be legal, Brandon? You think um, murder should be legal, Brandon? No, I think if you enact force against another person, you know, that's the only role of of enforcement against you is by taking someone's life or harming them or their property. So when you start to bridge that. When you when you borderline the yeah yeah well so w- and then there's the gray area of assault. But is climate change a crime? Like, is that what you're arguing? Who who can be charged for that? Is, how how can know, we punish I know, that? I know, but you got to think our kids gonna grow up in this future that probably won't exist unless somebody does something. Quick, somebody do but you, AOC. Come oh save God. us. Can we not talk about her? Because I'll just I won't even be able to talk. I'll be stuttering so much I can't stand her. She, so look, I mean, here's my. <laughs> She's my the stupidest person ever elected to Congress. Like no joke. I don't know. She is about dumb as fuck. That. No, no, no. She stupidest? says the dumbest things I have ever heard a congressperson ever say. I'm not. I'm not even fucking with you. She said some things that I think that she maybe misspoke and like... Or, misspoke? Or like, she like, doesn't understand anything that she says. <laughs> I, really, I think she's got a good concept. Oh she thinks, my God, you're killing me, I don't agree with her politically on every aspect, no. But I think she's she's well-rounded in certain aspects. Uh, other aspects, not so much. But she that's has, my personalist perspective. I think she's also how old? Like 29, 30? Just 29. Something. So I think that she's like, how well-rounded can we all be at... Uh, the age of 29, 30 years old. You know, uh, I would I'm say in, I'm, I'm 34. I'm, I'm still got a lot to learn in my life. We all do, but I'm saying, like, if you're going to be a person that has sway in public policy and, and you're going to say things in public that don't make any sense, like, you you know, you got to be able to back them up. And she's backtracked every time because she's dumb. She doesn't she's, know what she's talking about. Uh, in some aspects, I think she has an idea. I she mean, has an idea, but she's not there yet. Yeah, but how many other politicians? Do you think None of them. Think? Which is why Bernie Sanders is popular. What, because what, you don't think there's a lot of other Bernie. A lot of other. A lot of other. <laughs> <laughs> I love Bernie. No, I love no, him. I do. I do like. I'm him. not feeling the burn. I know you're not feeling the burn, but I'm uh, not in the Yang Gang either. We'll we'll talk about so, that in a minute. Interesting stuff. Yeah. I, I I could talk about UBI because that's that's something. That's oh fascinating. come on. Okay. So we gotta get get this out of the it's way concept, because it's a concept that I don't think works, but I want to no, hear your perspective. No, it's the concept of expanding the welfare state. End point. Period. That's it. All that they're doing uh, is taking money from something that's else. That's not fair, man. Yes, you, it is. No, yes, it is. That's I mean, exactly what it is. It's welfare. You know, you know, you're giving free taxpayer money to everybody in the country. That's impossible to sustain. You know, you know that whole stimulus though? package from from money? 2009. His argument, though, is that how much money do we spend on all of these crazy other aspects? That we could just eliminate. I don't deny that. And I but how can we just eliminate it? I I would agree. But, but you know, you're, you know, Bingo, you just you just hit the nail on the head. And where I want it, like it's like let's get when he when he comes through New Hampshire when everybody wants to skull <sighs> fuck New Hampshire once every eight years because that's what they do. Yeah. you know yeah. they come through and everybody fucking loves New Hampshire. Beat L, for instance. Oh, they beat yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he, he's here. Yeah. Let's, and, like, let's get him in Summersworth. Oh, God, All these guys will talk to him. I, no, I will. I'll get him right on the show. Dude, it's a fucking cash grab for me and everybody else. I don't give a fuck. I'm, I'm, I'm not guilty. I'm not fucking above that. Come right in. You're popular. You might get us likes. You would never come here. You know that, right? They would never come in, but they might. 
but they might. I would. I'm here. <laughs> See, that's the important thing. And that's why I, uh, mm. I seriously, mm. but what the fuck? Why can't we put up a solid, uh, a solid fucking candidate for president? I like Gary Johnson and I voted for him the last election. Gary fell off. I think after 2012, he he really was just burned out with he's the idea still of campaigning. A solid guy, though. No, he's for, amazing. He's, but I'm saying that like, you know, 2016 really could have been the year of our party. But I think Bill Weld fucked that up for us because he he basically w- was our you know the LP mouthpiece for you know for Hillary, and that's why people hate him so much in our party because he completely <sighs> burned. Gary publicly on t- on television and the rest of the party, and then he leaves our party to go challenge Trump in the primary. Like, yeah, oh it God, worse. it's it's like, and I and I kind of feel bad for for me like saying that because he you know supported my campaign for my second term as a rep, and I appreciated that. But it's like that that can't overshadow everything else that you've done like actions always speak louder than words i've seen a couple of other libertarians that i follow uh just randomly on facebook mm-hmm. they said the same thing they met him in person and they're just kind of like he's got like no personality like like, like, like that that's not what i expected at all yeah. and i expected his stances to be a little bit different actually uh so <laughs> when you ask somebody when you think you know somebody politically and then they kind of like you know, <laughs> Like, I've done I've done some some panels you know when I um, you know and in 2018 like I went around to a few state conventions including the national convention I'd done panels with Bill Weld and like he's a very intelligent guy but I think that his problem is is that he can't argue his way out of what he did in 2016 when he ran for president with you know uh, with, with Gary you know uh, and and uh, you know and unfortunately I don't, you know you know, there are a lot of people that feel burned by him in that way because that was supposed to be the year of our party and, and that was supposed to be, you know, the best way for us to capitalize on the most ridiculous candidates for president that we've ever okay, had in though, the history of our country. This could be the year for that party, though. But everybody Seriously? says that. Everybody says that. But, like, we have nobody at no, the front right. that Just really... organization is the problem. Yeah, opinion. and, like, I'm... Because you have such a wide spectrum of political candidates in the Libertarian Party, which, it, it's tough because I identify as Libertarian, but I'm probably going to end up voting, voting... I'm going to probably end up voting Democrat this year because I absolutely won't vote Republican, and there absolutely is... Well, it's an off year anyway. Me. What's that? It, 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 you know, it's an off year anyway. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so 2020, will, you know, will be the big year. Yeah. I, I, I no, I think that uh, you are. Right, I, I want to know your perspective. Do you think that <laughs> you think that Donald Trump is going to win this year, or do you think that there's going to be somebody that's going to come out of Donald Trump is going to win by an absolute landslide in 2020, and I and that, that's a fact. Like I'm not supporting Trump at all, but you have, but you're convinced. But you ha- yeah, oh absolutely. But you, you don't think that I I you have, have to, a, a steady. Convinced. Have you seen the field that's challenging him at the moment? Mm-hmm. But it's I think that Bernie, laughable. I think Bernie's going to beat him. I genuinely think they're going to rig the party against him again. Do you know how many people that like <laughs> were fam? No. So I thought that, and that's my thing, and that's why I absolutely despise Democrats. Let me just go ahead and say that. I hate Democrats because the, people were completely okay with the fact that they just ran. They, they just they fucked him completely, and in the fact that he's running as Democrat again, it kind of seems a little naive to me. At the same time. I think that he's he's right in the aspect that he's brought a lot of conversations to to forefront that people aren't having. And income inequality is one of those things. Mark. And I definitely want to have this Mark. conversation with you, Brandon. Oh, this Mark. No, this is great. So I don't believe in... <laughs> Wealth distribution. No, no. that's socialism. And I Bernie is the socialism guy. Can we stop? No. Can we stop don't with the is, burn though. train? Can we get off the goddamn burn train? Based on the statistical analysis that all the drug war policies that have been enacted for the last 50 years have specifically targeted poor urban black areas yep. and, you know, like, you know, um, in our country, and a lot of people that are in prison on drug crimes are poor black people. And that's, right. it's, it's shitty to, to, to think that even in 2019, I, I know, I know, oh, you know, current year, but it's like we're in the 21st century with all the, t- the technological, social, and cultural advances that we've had. The most, I think, the most advanced society that that we've ever seen in the history of forever. That we could still think that someone isn't worth enough based on the pigment of their fucking skin, 
and it blows my mind that that someone can look at someone and say, "Well, you're not the same color as me, so you don't matter as much." Like, right. so, how yeah, can we? Fucked up. How can we see humanity through those lens? Which is why, like, I absolutely and publicly denounce anybody who has the ideology that you are not a, a good enough person unless you're white or black or brown. It doesn't fucking matter. Right. You, you know what matters is what kind of person you are. Right. Your merit and your character. That's what we all should have been judged on in the first place. Yeah. Yep. No, you're absolutely right. And I think that the, the, this uh, this perspective uh, is 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 changing, unfortunately, for a lot of people because of the confusion uh, in the United States with the political system and and this feeling of of being left behind. And I think that for the white lower middle class and the reason why they voted for Trump is that they don't feel that they were factored in in the 2008 elections with Obama that they weren't factored in during that time they were left behind and they weren't as focused on and I and I get that aspect but at the same time I mean I think in general it's not that we're shifting one policy to the other. It's like you were saying about the drug policies previously. The drug policies are the problems here. So it's not just like you're saying that how they've impacted uh, the uh, the black culture uh, in, in in the black communities and in, in, in entirely is completely accurate. But I think that now recently with the influx of meth and all that stuff, like you were talking about, I'm sure that there's probably these this this whole other issue where people are getting wrapped up into that system in North Carolina and stuff in these white communities too. Um, so I think that it's going to change as time goes on and it'll evolve, but traditionally and historically it's always been, um, you know, really just detrimental to the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the black community. So what I brought this on was I read a post from somebody from the Libertarian Party of Florida where their, their county affiliate had passed uh, something um, in their committee that they were going to start pooling funds together to pay for bail for people that have been uh, jailed for, for marijuana possession. And, like, that's the kind of voluntarist action that, that I think that, that best exemplifies what our political party is about, where it's like we actually care about the rights of others, where you're being jailed for possessing a plant that grows in the ground, and the state arbitrarily says that, that that's a crime. And so... We, we believe in changing public policy, but we also believe in changing culture where we uh, respect the, uh, inalienab the inalienable rights of others by saying that you shouldn't be jailed for possession of a plant. So now we're going to try to change that by paying for your bail and getting you um, like in a place where you can fight the state on this. So yeah. that's... So that's you know so that's where this conversation started where it's like I that's that's the, you know the, you know the party that I believe in and that's why I'm a member of the Libertarian Party is because we do things like that and I'd that's like huge. to be a part of that change in New Hampshire where we finally can get to a point where we're not jailing people for that either and that people can go buy it in the store you know you know you know kind of like they would beer and and booze and it it shouldn't be a a, a matter of what other people think is right and wrong for you. Right. Only you can make that choice for yourself. I you know? agree. Yeah. And I think that's huge. That that's the uh, the directions that um, I think that the, that a lot of people are 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 finding now is that more middle ground where they're not feeling that they're torn to the right, they're torn to the left. That they can find a common sense middle ground um, and not feel alienated. But I think it's really unfortunate when New Hampshire uh, ousts things like the Libertarian Party from ballots. Uh, it's just, it's it's crazy because, you know, you're not giving an entire state a third-party option. No, and and since we lost ballot access by not getting 4% um, in, the, in the general election, like, you know, now we're automatically unenrolled, according to, you know, to the, to, to the Secretary of State's office. So it's like, okay, but I don't identify as unenrolled. I identify as a member of the Libertarian Party. So you can't tell me that I'm not a part of a political party because you don't think that we exist, it, it shouldn't work that like way. That. And, and we sponsored so many bills, you know, through election law to, we have to, to change identify that. as independent now. No, right? and I that, won't because yeah. that's not what I am. I'm I a member of the Libertarian Party. I believe I in, in our and I believe in our platform and our principles. And you know, uh, me and and, and Caleb, uh, uh, Caleb. Uh, uh, Dyer. Yes. Yep. Thank you. So I've got a little bit of a speech impediment. I'm not sure if I mentioned this earlier, but um, I want people to know that. 
Uh, I've struggled with a stutter, you know, pretty much my entire life, and so I have a hard time saying certain words that start with a certain uh, consonant or vowel. So if I stutter, I do apologize and do my best to get through it. I've been dealing with it my whole life, so. <laughs> I think you do an exceptional job. Yeah, thank, man, you. thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Especially, so, uh, you know, public speaking is a tough Oh, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's yeah. tough. Training for Samsung uh, as a rep, and, and, it, and it's tough, I can't, especially with the uh, with uh, with that as an obstacle I, I mm-hmm. absolutely uh, think that that you're doing a fantastic job thank you so yes. you know so I wanted to mention that that uh, him and you know Caleb and I we uh, we had fought an election law committee in the state to, to change kind of how we deal with balloting and and how we deal with primaries and how you know we allow other um, parties to, to get the recognition that that the voters need I mean there's like 40 something percent of people in New Hampshire that are considered independents um, or who don't vote that that's a huge block of people that are not involved in our political process because they don't have the representation on the ballot that they should have and the reason why I lost my second you know my my bid for a second term I got 10 percent um, you know, for a third-party candidate, I think who's ever run as a third-party candidate um, in uh, in uh, Rochester. So I think, I mean, like you know, um, like as an incumbent, you know, it's 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 tough to see that, and I I, I, I had a hard time dealing with it. I'm not gonna lie. Like I was very sad and upset that I didn't feel of like, course. you know, I, I I did you know the best I could in my job and did the best I could in my campaign. I I thought I ran a you know a a, a pretty good campaign, but the idea that um, it's hard to break into a duopolistic system, you know, considering the the person who, who's ever in the White House is such a polarizing figure that it that it will have impact on every election in the country. It doesn't matter how small it is. If people right. know what party is in current political power, that's going to affect how you get votes. And so everyone was like well if you don't vote for trump then you're anti-american and people who was like oh my god we have to get trump out of office so it was like people were voting for trump as a way to keep all the crazy people out and people and then and you know you know, you know the crazy people were voting to get the trump people out so it was like i kind of you know you know fell through the cracks to you know to a lot of people and I did my best to get the word out, you know, about who I am and what I did in the last two years and what I stood for and why I did what I did. But um, it's just people see all of our federal, uh, you know, politicians, what they see in the media, and that's what they think our political system is everywhere. So I've been trying to tell people not only in my own, you know, party but everywhere. It's like if you want to change policy and you want to change our political culture, you've got to start small, man. Which is why I'm running for city council now. Because I, I, I can have the best impact in my community if I'm a member of, of my city level. government. Absolutely. I can't do anything about the state or in Congress. Like I gotta start small. And yeah. and you know, thankfully it's nonpartisan, so I don't I don't I don't have to worry about parties, but I think parties should matter anyway. You know, I you know, people should be able to vote for somebody based on that candidate's um, platform and ideas and what they, they think should change and how we should go about changing it. So sure. I, you know, we have a, a huge problem with uh, revitalization in downtown. That's That's been a problem for 20-something years. So it's like, right. how are we going to change that without increasing property taxes even more than, you know, than they Coming already have from been? from Lafayette Street kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. man. Like, I like we can experience that shit. We it grew up in changed. the ghetto of Rochester, if we can call it that. <laughs> but it was, dude. It, it was hard. That was the worst street in Rochester. It still is. There's I've, cops I've there all the time. Kid, Many I stories I've on, heard. Yeah. When I first moved onto that street, a guy got stabbed to death. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. I'm like, holy fuck. That was guy got shot in the chest a year or two ago. Oh, my God. It's not Compton, but holy shit, that was new to me when I moved there right like moved from Dover my parents are like we're living here now I'm like on a street where a guy dude a dude got stabbed I'm like fuck and Jesus. then I got beat up all the time because I had blue hair and like you beat me up because I wore an offspring shirt and, uh, you dick I never punched you no ever. I know <laughs> I never you punched you yelled at me for ever. it though <laughs> I love the offspring which is weird it's funny now but like love the offspring. Well, I'm, I'm eating pizza sorry but um 
it's funny now, but back then you're like, oh, you're the offspring kid. And I'm like, I wore an offspring shirt once when I met you, like once. <laughs> this is, this is, yeah. And you've always, like, you've always said I'm, I'm the offspring Which is kid. ironic because I totally love offspring. I love them still. They were the first band that I, <laughs> the first band I ever saw on my 16th birthday, man. I saw them with Cypress Hill and MXPX, which Whoa, is that's a weird show. combination. <laughs> yeah. and it was so weird. <laughs> like passing blunts down in the crowd and I got fucking like a Cypress Hill blunt. Most of it was tobacco. Oh, but there Jesus. was some marijuana. In there. I've never. They just, they're passing that shit down in the crowd. I've never been to a show, you know, to an Offspring show ever. And, and which it, is funny. It was right around. Yeah, I've never seen. The, uh, never seen an Offspring. What was it called? The um, something of something tour. It was after their second popular album. There, Conspiracy of One. That's what it was. Oh, that, that was back in two thousand. Mm-hmm. Wow, that was a long, long time ago, man. I remember when old, that album man. came out. <laughs> sixteen year, on my sixteenth birthday. Two thousand. I was. Birthday. I think I was. How old are you? Th- you're thirty six. I'm thirty four. Thirty four. So I was eleven. I think December. I, th- I think it was eleven or twelve when that came out. They were great, no, I was twelve. Man. Yeah. That's oh awesome. my god. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. But see, uh, so music. Uh, while we're, we're we're gonna go to a tangent and fuck all the other shit. <laughs> music. We gotta discuss music. Typo. Oh, yes. Negative. Yes. Typo negative. Oh, yes. Fucking negative. Absolutely. Love it. Awesome band. Such, awesome. such so good band. So for it. those of you out there that are listening that have gotten this far <laughs> <laughs> through the politics and the boring <laughs> stuff, now we can talk about music. No. Uh, typo negative. Absolutely. Yes. An awesome band. I know you listen to a lot of like black metal. I know you listen to a lot of different types of metal, and you're very versatile. You listen to uh, even some easy listening stuff like this guy here. I, I'm all <laughs> oh, over yeah. the place too, um, so I'd love to hear your perspective. We got to see Typo right before. Yeah, we just right before. I've never seen them, which makes me so sad. We, oh, but we didn't get to see him with Josh on keyboards. We got to see him some weird. Keyboard I think it was the uh, keyboardist guy. of oh. Dio. I oh, believe, really? yeah, he came up and some did guy an wasn't just amazing story, job, like, but amazing. I mean, they sounded amazing. They played Anesthesia, which is nice. like our, one of yeah, our favorite Anesthesia's songs. Anesthesia, freaking an amazing song. And we, I remember like the day before, we we're like, really? imagine if they played this live. <laughs> <laughs> ding, 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 and then, ding, then they did. <laughs> they, they oh, totally like, wow. did. That <laughs> album is completely like I think it gets pushed to the wayside because it was a weird album for them. Because yeah. it was a weird transition from them. So, you know, so that album actually, I read the background about it. That album was specifically done in a way as a middle finger to the label because they wanted them to be more mainstream. Oh, like the Roadrunner, Road Racer? Yes. Back yes. in the day? So they intentionally wrote an album that has a, a specific formula, which is why people were like, ew, like, we want the, you know, the band that has all these weird, like, dirgy, screamy, like, I want to kill myself parts. Oh, yeah. But it was all, like, happy and go lucky, and that wasn't <laughs> what they were about. So I, I like the irony of it, but, I did, you know, th- there are some great songs on that yeah, album. Yeah, totally. If you don't kill me, I, oh, I love I'm that gonna song. Have to kill you. I love that, that song That song is so that's one of my much. favorites, definitely. Fucking, I love that. The uh, keyboards in so that good. song and the vocals are, like, godly in that. Yeah, like, absolutely. My, but my favorite album, I'd have to say... My favorite, and this is a weird thing to say, was their last album. Yeah. The newest yeah. one. Because, for yeah. one, it was the first time they'd done live drums in like 20 yeah. years. Yeah, yeah. It was and the keyboard synth Peter drums. was yeah. such like an inspirational, pa- like, yeah. you know, like he was, he Sweet was so soul. like passionate and like inspirational about everything that he sang because it was him getting sober yeah. and it was him finding like a new inspiration for like you know uh, trying to write songs for the band yeah. and then, like I was so upset when I found out that he died. Oh, like, I was no, I was like a, because it was like because he was like dying, he was right? getting off the alcohol, like and he was you know yeah. you know taking care of his health problems, and he fucking dies like just out of nowhere, yeah. and it was like and but the and the same year as as Dio, and I was overseas though. when I found out about that, and oh, I cried shit. that day. I was yeah, like, was like my heroes are dying. Dude, like, fucking, why is this happening? This I definitely awful. cried. Yeah. Dude, I came back from the fucking jam space. I was in the mountaineer at the time. I'm like. And I'm like, <laughs> dude, I fucking I listened to us. But I don't think I listened to Hail think... and Farewell to Britain. I'm like, oh, that's an, an incredible Jesus. song. Like the end of that so song good. still gives me like, did I just hear that? Like I do it to this day. And yeah. you know, the album's been out for what twelve years now, and I, it's I listen so weird. to it now. Twelve years now, and it yeah. just seems still pretty Solid damn stuff. new. I so that album is is funny to me because it was him kind of like going back to his you know Catholic upbringing and yeah. the uh, you know Prophet of Doom like I I find a lot of humor in that song yeah and I think it was him like it's his always trying to you know find 
excuse me, um, the answers to the questions that he's that he's had about religion. Oh yeah. my God, they, they, he's had about you know you know Christianity and, and, and you know religion. Like you know, and he's had some pretty offensive songs. Like when he was doing Carnivore. <laughs> oh, Carnivore! And oh, oh my God, like some of the <laughs> stuff he wrote for that band. Like, yeah. but I got like that's what, what you know like what they were going for. I find it you know hilarious because yeah. it's just out you know it's just out there but i mean definitely same that's how he was raised and so it was like he was going back to the roots of that to try to find you know peace in his life he's he's had you know a lot of shit happen to him with you know the deaths of a lot of people in his family oh, yeah. and like totally i feel terrible for him like he, he like you know he lost his mom and and um i he lost his his uncle like he lost everybody dude yeah, like yeah. everybody <laughs> <laughs> and and like his Everything music dies, man. his music always did something to me when I was going through periods of like I just hate everything about my life because I because mm. like, nothing is going right. Yeah. Um Typo is my all time favorite band, but I know that I have to be in a certain mindset to listen to them because they they that he's able to pull that kind of emotion from me. Oh, I definitely agree, sure. man. I haven't listened to Typo in a little like couple months and usually I just have it going. Mm-hmm. But it's like yeah. Yeah, certain things bring back. He, uh, he, it, I first <laughs> when I first heard them as band, I didn't like them. What? I didn't like them. At What's all. wrong with you? No, <laughs> yeah, I was like, listen, I listen know, to this no, song. No, listen. It took me. It took me some time, but they they're just one of those bands that like you can't not like them forever. Mm-hmm. They grow on you. They've got to get you somewhere. And they're good because they will. They Every will single album is like isn't... That's where they got me. Or as an art form, they are just unparalleled. I really? used his really music are. in my wedding. Really? Oh, yeah. Damn. That's a shit, man. I think uh, uh, Love You to Death was our oh. walk-off song, actually, I believe. That's oh, my awesome. God. Yeah. That is so good. Yeah. yeah. That's like that. Cool, I So I've always appreciated, um, you know, Josh, the, you know, keyboardist. He actually yeah. has a lot of input in the writing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And... Man, like the melodies that that, that that they come up with, and the you know the you know the harmonies for the vocals are just insane. Like I think that's what draw me to them was their ability to make the harmonies and the vocals so in depth. Like yeah. they're just massive, but their sound is so tinny. There's yeah. like no real bass in their music because they've always used you like know the, the distortion, right? The bass. And and the yeah. the the computerized drums and whatnot so they don't have any low end in their music but for some reason when they put the keyboard you know sequences in there it fills everything oh yeah Yeah. everything in the song so he is brilliant about that and that's like I've watched a lot of their stuff when they did shows on you know on a on a, a YouTube and and um, he's a big part of their set he's a big part of their sound on stage so like yeah. I've always appreciated how important you know keyboards are to you know to band so i and, and I, I know they get kind of you know they're kind of a joke to a lot of people but man if you can get a, a good keyboardist in your band you're oh, a, you sound. are a complete oh, sound absolutely so i'm actually in a band now i'm i'm singing in a band yeah. it's uh, progressive power it's a band called shrouded luminosity i was telling you yeah I gotta yeah check it out so we Definitely. we haven't had anything put on paper yet so i'm i'm the new guy i've been in the band since january so we haven't done anything in the studio or put any tracks down or, or whatnot so if you do hear anything online it is the old singer but yeah. um so our our goal is to kind of tell a story um i kind of came into a lot of the stuff that was already you know put down on paper so but we're telling a story about a guy that kind of you know finds himself in a battle for him and his land and, and his community and you know trying to get things right again so yeah um so that's kind of like what the first part of our set is and it's it's a a pretty cool you know concept of everything that they're that they're kind of putting together and so i'm hoping that like after we finish all this stuff then that's already been established i'll be able to kind of put my flavor on things but yeah. it's really cool coming from blackened you know uh you know uh uh, like, like black metal type. Uh, uh, well, it's more like on the uh, de- uh, death, like death metal, metal side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so, like, I've never been in a band where I've done all clean singing. Um, so it's it's you know it's it's a new experience for me. I and I, I I've been able to sing my whole life, but like that's funny. Yeah. The, uh, same boat, right? Yeah, now. I'm not doing the band that I'm in right now. Is is more like alternative than it is like like heavier stuff like unrest and transit. Unrest in Transit was more like a, a, a aggressive. You know, I've seen you local guys. Style. Yeah. Anyway, whereas this is com- <laughs> like three chord, like <laughs> '90s rock kind of thing. I love that it's that that name too, though. Like I don't like a lot of three word band names, but 
but that works. I like well, that oh, that, uh, that band unrest, name. Unrest yeah. Transit. Yeah, that was uh, something it's I, unique. I got, you know, fell asleep and you know. four. I think four or five of our songs. Well, no, uh, the fifth one was like a cover, but yep. we that came from. We just we had a show. Yeah. And, and we we had, we had four days, and we just got out of this other band. And we're just like, all right, three, four, four songs, real quick. Yeah. Here we go. And that was at the break. <laughs> house. We just kind of oh, ramped God. it together. <laughs> yeah, and, and the show's it, up on it, it too. Stuff that like you and Matt just come on the stage. I'm like, together. Oh, I'm nervous. And uh, and then like so now like I'm uh, I'm in a band called uh, Ambient Discord, and it's 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 interesting. It's like very like '90s ish, but there's some different writing. I'm using songs material that had been a little bit older and then stuff that we're all writing together and uh doug from unrest and transit uh, and matt uh are playing and i'm playing guitar and singing and then uh dante uh, uh a friend of ours uh is playing drums he's a great drummer um it's, it's a very interesting uh direction to go so i'm excited we're playing uh, on the 17th at the brick house so. nice Oh no shit! Please. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Uh, that, that, it confirmed as of today, so probably as a three piece because Matt's health issues and whatnot. So probably yeah, just yeah. Be, I know Matt's having a hard time. The, yeah, it's been really up and down with him. Is he home? Or uh, is he I still not? think he's at the hospital right now because he just yanked his central line out. Uh, was, Douglas uh, went with Douglas. I don't know. It was an accident. I think he's been going up to to Boston to Mass Gen yeah. a lot. And it's tough because I know he wants to play music and stuff, and he just hasn't been able to be there a couple of times. And honestly, I mean, he's he, when he can be there, he can be there, and we're we're gonna just play three piece uh, until he can be there. Yeah. So we'll go with the flow, and and I'm okay with uh, doing it that way. I mean, it puts a little bit more pressure on me because he's a better guitarist than I am. <laughs> fills in the, the my screw ups, uh, but uh, it's all right. I uh, I'm I. I I, I really uh, I dig what we're doing and I'm excited to. Uh, so what to would play. you compare it to, if you could? That's uh, it's hard. That's really hard because mm. it's it's got some like abstract like kind of like hard rock metal kind of clutch influences when it comes to like guitar parts, mm. um, especially on one of the newer songs that we're writing that's more from Doug and then I write some like verse chorus verse kind of stuff um, but with heavier parts so there's some a little bit more aggressive vocals but okay. it's it's very it's, it's it's interesting I was expecting I, you to say something like Smashing Pumpkins or something I would say which I'm cool with I love yeah. Smashing Pumpkins I would Pumpkins. say some <laughs> like like th- there's definitely an influence from them there's definitely an influence from even Foo Fighters a little bit I guess I don't know man I have why does everyone a- give them so much shit like, Foo Fighters? Yeah, they're, they're, they're an amazing band. Yeah, they're, they're pretty. Band. They're, they're pretty really fucking solid, band. definitely. I, uh, I think people because like, oh, they're mainstream. Yeah, but they're like, they're he's the most consistent dude in the game. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? For sure, yeah. for sure. I uh, and I, I uh, he broke girl, his leg and he just. I, I saw that show. <laughs> I saw the video of it. He was like, I fucking broke my leg. I'm gonna keep playing though. Like, yeah. I, they're 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 like putting his leg in a cast, in a cast as he's playing on like, stage. I don't know how he was dealing with like all, with all that pain yeah. and still being able to play and That's still be in tune. Bro. Like it was ridiculous. It's like awesome. he's a like he's a professional man, yeah. but like. So, I like he's always been the best part of uh, Nirvana. I've never liked them. Like, well, I, I I can't say that. I did when I was younger, but like I grew, I outgrew them like pretty quickly. I was sick of their crap. And um but like he's he's always been the best part of their sound because I mean he's a you know a great drummer but like you know, absolutely great musician. amazing drummer and then like I, you know coming out of that and Queens like of the stone age uh did you hear their uh the album where he pl- he plays an entire uh album with them? on the drums does he I really didn't get into them to be honest with you I like them a lot not too bad actually give give them a chance again if you get a chance you're really stoned and you'll be good I'm I'm telling you we have probably about 20 minutes left so what do you uh, what do you think we should get into Uh, aliens oh god oh boy no uh, Mark you're killing me with this I know I know I'm just kidding (laughs) Uh, <laughs> no, I will say actually, I was talking to my wife, you know, about this today because we, we met somebody that. So we're trying to like start a a, a home based um a oh my god a business home based yeah. uh, where we're selling like um um like eco friendly reusable household products and just trying to you know to network to get into you know some stores in the area and uh, the lady that we talked to 
is like big into like astral projection, cosmology, yeah. quantum physics type of stuff. And it was a really interesting conversation that we had not only home. I said it's it's statistically impossible that like humanity is the only conscious being in the universe because of the observable amount of planets and, and solar systems that we can see that our planet could not be the only one that can sustain life in the way that we exist. So it was like, yeah. that's why I can't believe in religion because they have this egocentric view that humanity is so important because the thousands of gods that yeah. exist, they all created us. So it's like, it's, it's impossible to believe in those stories when, you know, there's so many of them. And so, you know, there's so many, um, Per, you know perspectives there but it's science, all specific and they all they all correlate too. together like certain they're all the freaking same pretty so, much <laughs> but it's like if you think about it scientifically it's, it's oh, like in the religions yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. sorry no, i wasn't right. specifying but <laughs> no, no no you're right yeah, yeah. no oh, i just want to make sure i was uh, but scientifically speaking it's like we know that there are so many galaxies and planets and solar systems that how can we be the only species that exist that are conscious and sentient so it's like we don't know what's out there we can call them aliens but we don't i, so I don't think of them as little it, green it's men a mathematical impossibility right really. and and i agree with that but so you know what the drake equation is I'm basically saying that i didn't hear that the what the drake equation the the, the drake equation it sounds familiar basically the the familiar the the, the idea is that um we will exist and another society will probably exist, but not at the same time in which we can communicate with each other because of the problem of light travel. So, but is it a society that will on, or on Earth or from another our planet? society? You got Society A, Society B. This dimensional twenty thousand light years away, okay. twenty million light years away. Gotcha. Yep. Say. The distance of light and how long it takes for information to travel. Because we're in the past at that point. Exactly. Um, so the likelihood of us surviving long enough that's to make trippy, contact dude. with them <laughs> yeah. uh, that's is, trippy. Is, is unlikely uh, because I, of the, I know what, I don't, the I don't think I've heard of that then because that's an interesting concept because I think... I, you know, uh, you know that might be why black holes are so like fascinating to 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 scientists because you know when you cross the event horizon, we don't know what happens. We, we have no concepts. idea. Well, in the, the the theory that black hole is basically just a a, a small a, a large amount of matter, and it's the space around the black hole that's distorted. Uh, it's not necessarily the black hole that's distorted. You're not falling into it. But hole. matter has to go uh, somewhere, it, right? So, so where does it go? <laughs> we don't know. It, the theory <laughs> is like... that it could pass from one universe into another, and that time travel can't happen from our universe to another universe. That it can only happen into another universe. I think that's why Interstellar was such a popular movie was because it was playing on those concepts and theories and I think that I love that they're thinking about that because we I think as a species and you know especially as Americans where we're so easily entertained that we don't want to think about things when we, when we watch films and it's true. and and hear you know you know I mean granted uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson fucking well, destroyed it but <laughs> as science he was like tore a movie apart and I'm like oh, I, 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 I like wanted that little like glimmer like I got it like I love him too but yeah, like yeah. No, I wanted to believe in something like that you that know? movie was pretty solid though, it's trippy though because he's falling though. into another dimension where he's going back in the past to, to communicate like it that's really, an insane idea it's a whole, the whole concept <laughs> <laughs> and I really am not a fan of uh, Matthew McConaughey, but I really liked him in that movie. Really, I I, I think he's an incredible actor. I think he is in certain things. He's but, a character actor, you know that, uh, right? He totally is, and uh, uh, I really, really, he just botched the fuck out of the Man in Black character in the Dark Tower series. Oh, just come on. It was horrible. You know, actually, I think it's one of my favorite the, films. Did you read the Dark Tower series? I, I really don't, you know, read a lot of fiction, to be honest with you. Okay. So, well, that was the, that, that, that's a big thing for me. That, 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 that whole series is, is, is there a movie uh, about that now? Uh, they, they made a, yeah. Really? Like Idris Elba. Right. All right. So you didn't hear about this whole thing? I mean, I'm surprised, I especially because of the, <laughs> dude, I'm so like in, so in they tune. made a Dark Tower movie that was, they compiled seven books into an hour and 30 minutes. That's impossible. 
what yes, the hell? it's impossible. It's impossible to take one of those books and compile it. They, and then they changed Roland the Gunslinger from a white guy to a black guy, which was a whole thing that blew up. People got wicked upset about it. The only it. thing I know about that series was the band Demons and... Uh, Demons and... Uh, uh, the, the Wizards. Oh, um, Wizard and Glass? No, Demons and... Uh, and... Uh, God, <laughs> wizards! Uh, John Shaper from Ice Earth. It, 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 it was his side project. He wrote a whole album about it. It was called oh, okay. the uh, Crimson King, and, and that was the. And then you know they had that whole concept about that. So that's Dying. got it, got it. So that's how I know about it. But Ice um, Earth is pretty amazing. Yeah, oh, dude, <laughs> they're fucking so crazy. I didn't, know about that. I didn't even know about that. I'm gonna have to tr- now this yeah. research tangent. I, um, yeah, I gotta. <laughs> There's so many things I have to look up. <laughs> so there's actually a song called "The Gunslinger," and, and and it's about that character. No shit. Yeah, hold. I'm seeing oh if I can bring it up. Oh my god! Put this, this on the podcast. Awesome. See if I can bring this up. For sure. I'm still not getting great service here. But anyway, so so speaking of Matthew McConaughey, my favorite movie from him actually, I would have to say is Dallas. Uh, uh, oh my god! I can't talk today. Dallas Buyers Club. Because he was highlighting I heard that was a good movie. the AIDS crisis, but it was based on a true story of he was trying to get the medicine to everybody outside of the the you know corporate conglomerates or whatnot. And his sure. emotional performance in that, like he had lost all the weight for it. Yeah. And he put so much of himself into playing some guy that was a bigot at one point in his life and realizing like, oh, AIDS isn't always caused by gay sex. And it was right. like this shit can happen with blood transfusions and whatnot. So yeah. it's like he he realized like the error of his own personal views, and then like he had tried so hard to help people, and had a whole thing going where you know like he was selling the drugs to people, but it was for a price that people could afford. So like he was stealing from other people to give to others, but like it was just the way that he that he performed in that movie. Like totally sold me on him as an actor. Like like I cried when he cried. So it was like. Yeah. It was absolutely incredible. Um, so I would I would say you know you know you know you need to watch that. Well, so well yeah. another thing that I liked with him and it was uh, Contact with um, Jodie Foster. Um, have you ever seen that yeah. movie? Yeah, uh, it's crossing and and I like the novel too. I really really. I'm actually really still reading that and I got it right over there. And Carl Sagan. So I've got a fiction series. Um, the the Shannara series, the uh, Sword of Shannara by Terry Brooks. Okay. He so. He was really influenced by you know Tolkien. Like his yeah. first book came out in seventy seven, so like it wasn't long after. Have you read you know, the, 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 the Tolkien series? Of course I have, but I'm I, saying no, no. I'm, I'm just curious, yeah, curious. of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying that the Shannara series, you know, kind. So um, th- there's actually a character in that story called Alanon, and he's like the sole druid who. Um, was the last of his kind because the rest of them had been, you know, killed off by like the king, you know, the other the other bad king guy, and it's just like so like that's kind of what I'm reading for you know for fiction. But I'm one of those boring people that that likes to read about philosophy and politics and religion. So. <laughs> no, hey, I no, completely understand. so I've got the song pulled up if I'm we want to get a little clip of it. Yeah, so why I asked you about that was um, I haven't read the. Um, the Tolkien. Uh, I gotta get the Marley in here. Or the Hobbit, or any of that. You yet. you didn't read it? I haven't. I've oh my never god, read it. dude! <laughs> I've never read it. Absolutely. They're amazing. I, I and I and I've heard that from almost everyone. So I plan on reading it. Um, How have you gone? Thirty four years of have ne- 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 never read the series. It's, I know. it's incredible. It's and I've heard that from almost everybody. And you're a nerd as much as I am. I That's am. crazy. I totally am. I've read <laughs> like uh, Tales of the Bounty Hunter and Tales of Mos Eisley Cantina and all kinds of stuff. Star Wars shit that like just has no merit oh, man. in society like compared to that literary masterpiece and yeah I haven't read it so I've never I've never actually read like any of the Star Wars like books oh my goodness I'm, so like I know Suck that there right but there's like an, there's like more than one author who was like had, who has done stories about the Star Wars canon so it's like I don't even know like where I would See, start and, anyway. and then Disney threw it out so it's like it's a waste of time at this point like I mean I it's not for me because I love it I love Tales of the Bounty Hunter, Tales of Mos Eisley Cantina, uh, dude, all of those books from back in the day, uh, even the um, the Thrawn trilogy, all of that shit was really great. Um, but they've, uh, you know, they've 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 just destroyed all of that. 
So I've got but this. I've I got this song pulled up. If you want to hear a little clip. Oh yeah. Star Wars. So the singer who did uh, the album is the singer from Blind Guardian. So. Oh nice. Him and John kind of collaborated for this for this album, and uh, the Gunslinger is about um, the Stephen King Dark Tower series. He's an incredible singer. Yeah, he's nuts. <laughs> like, you gotta hear like how high he goes. Oh, jeez. If you finally fail the test, what would it mean? Yeah, <laughs> that's like the ice earth. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it goes in pretty hard, but like, it's Damn. like I, you know, that album came out when I was in high school, and I was like obsessed with it because, you know, I love the guy from Bl- I, I love Bl- I, I love Blood Guardian. I, you know, oh, you, know, yeah. you, know you know, love um, Ice Star, So it was cool to have them collaborate and have like a little specialized project. Yeah, that's pretty for, badass. Definitely. So, yeah, like I, I mean, I've been into metal, you know, pretty much, you know, my, my, you know, uh, my, my, my whole life, and I remember like. You know, some of the kids I used to hang out with when I was in school, like, who claimed to like it, and, like, they got out of school, and they grew up a little bit, now they, like, you know, uh, I don't even know, like, what's <laughs> popular anymore, but, like, so that's what, you know, they go more, you know, the indie stuff, the pop stuff, and I'm, yeah. I've gone even heavier as I've gotten older, like, I listen yeah. to a lot of crazy <laughs> crap out there that's, like, so, like, just stupid heavy and yeah. like it's you know i it's you know it, it's got to be a passion for you you know and yeah. and uh you know i've been been playing in bands since i was like 16 maybe like 2004 yeah. so Damn. uh my first band actually was with matt fog that you know that, oh, no we're, shit. that we're all friends with yeah and this little oh. stupid thing that we did a horrible demo oh my god i won't i won't <laughs> let anybody hear it it's so goddamn awful <laughs> What's that? but uh Nothing. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So you know, so so music has always been a huge part of my life, and I I studied it enough for like, and I'm pretty much like an encyclopedia of metal history now because I I've cared so much about it. I've read all the books, and you know, I I finally got to to see um, uh, Striper. I've got to see uh, you know you know Megadeth. I finally saw them. Um, nice. Incredible, uh, you know, band live. Um, yeah, that must have been nuts. And um, and uh, I'm going to see a, a, a Judas Priest for the first time in May. Oh fuck! And right. I can't wait, man. Like, if I could, if I could get to Rob Halford, if I can get to 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 Rob Halford's feet and just fall to the ground, be like, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. <laughs> <laughs> Take so many influence from him, like as a singer, and and like at his age to still be doing yeah. what they do and like you know Jeez. Firepower is an incredible album like it's heavy and like yeah. oh my god it's uh, like they're incredible still and it's like they, yeah. you, know, they, you know they've been a band since 1975 something yeah, like that that's, like it's a good something stretch. crazy <laughs> like that so it's like I'm finally seeing like all the big bands who've had a big influence on me I still haven't seen Metallica though because they want you know four hundred bucks a ticket. So they can I know, like, themselves. I, I've, I've definitely, <laughs> I definitely want to see. Like I had a dream. I want to, but I can't afford their tickets. That's I can't ridiculous. afford their tickets either. But I'd fucking love to. I'd be like, oh, that's, that's amazing. But yeah, I've seen Slayer. Expensive. Slayer's awesome live. And never you know, seen Slayer. Really? Yeah. Oh, it's so much fun. So much fun. And like, it's funny. Like, you know how old they are, but you know, Carrie King has never aged. <laughs> I yeah. <laughs> Like Tom Araya is like all he's, he's so gray and silver his <laughs> giant beard and like oh, yeah. I saw them uh, at uh, Mayhem Fest when Slipknot headlined a couple years mm. ago and I, that's how I saw them you know I saw it um, 
uh, is Motorhead as well. Motorhead. You and, see Motorhead. And uh, oh, I was I I was mm. upset when uh, when Lemmy died and it's awful. I watched uh, but that actually happened when I came home from deployment in 2015. And, like yeah. not long after I came home, he died, and then I saw his uh, his funeral uh, live on YouTube. They they live streamed it. Yeah, I cried, man. It was awful. Yeah. Like, but I mean, if you think about it, the guy partied like an animal oh, for forty fucking years. So it yeah. was like, okay, I, I can understand it, that but it was like, sense. he's God. <laughs> Lemmy is God. So like, when he died, it was like, no, he can't die. He's God, you know. And like, yeah. I so oh, I oh he died. I choked up. Oh, oh he I, I choked up died. when uh, when uh, Dave Grohl gave his oh, eulogy. I, I, that, I was gonna that say that broke me, dude. That is he's just like fucking. I remember yeah. I was watching that in the kitchen. I was freaking oh, smoking real, a cigarette under this fucking oh, stupid oh, fan oh, in my kitchen, yeah. in the old place I used to live in, and I'm just like, oh, oh this is awful. Well, I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah. I didn't know that they had that kind of relationship. I had no idea. I had no idea. Yeah, they're yeah, like two either. opposite ends of me the either. spectrum. So it was like I didn't know that they had that that they were that close. And like, yeah. I didn't even I didn't even feel that like you know that um, that feeling when his son gave the eulogy because I didn't you know I don't know if he really was close to any of his kids and whatnot and you know but but uh when when uh you know you know dave was a you know a, a pretty good storyteller so like yeah, when he told definitely. his story i was like oh my god like he sounds like he was an awesome dude like just a cool guy to fucking chill with he had no yeah. ego like right he like he lived in some crummy apartment but he was worth millions of yeah. dollars like it was insane but like all he wanted to do was just rock dude and, like he yeah. used to sit at the same bar yep in his same seat uh, in, in LA the, uh, and, and playing the slot games slot and whatnot yeah. and like he's a real person I know people yeah. that have met him and he's like like the nicest man like and it's crazy because like he's done so many crazy shit in his life and they've you know and his band has been such a huge influence in metal and on me like I, I love them like you know he like him and his band were the first to really in my opinion mesh the ideas of punk and metal together yeah. By by bringing in both of those cultures together and saying it's cool to like them, yeah. Because we can put aside like what we th- what we think about punk and metal, but we can all come together and rock out to Motorhead. Yeah. Everybody says that. Everybody, you cannot deny that. These, the music speaks for they itself. They have bridged that <laughs> gap. They are the, the you know the, and and and, the, and they were the first band to do it. You know, yeah. and so like he was really important on the on, you know like on the. Like you know, I'm on the metal scene, and and I listened to Hawkwind, and it was weird because it was like, I know that that like he was a big part of that band too. So, hearing what he did in Hawkwind, and then starting you know you know you know the Motorhead, and and it was so it was just, it's just cool like hearing the progression over the years, and yeah, and uh, you know people might say that they've had the same sound, but I wouldn't agree. You know, like he, I've I've watched him fiddle on his bass, and I'm like, holy crap! Like, I don't know anybody that plays like him. You know, like I don't even think Peter Steele played. Little, 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 little. Yeah, <laughs> that's the first person I Which thought of. Which is interesting because I feel like they both play bass kind of like a guitar. They style. they did. You know what they, I mean? They did absolutely, they, it, but in a different way. Yeah. They had two different pol- polar differences there, which I can. Um, relate to and admire because as a guitarist I'm not super technical. I tuck my pinky I all kinds of bad form issues <laughs> as oh, a guitarist. Too. But I don't give a shit. I mean I play because I want to play and it's a fucking it's a it's a raw personal selfish thing. I don't give a fuck. It's not for anybody else. That's <laughs> right. goddamn sure. Yeah, man, you have to care about technique. It's just if if you feel it you play it. You that's know? it. So that's, so that's it for for me. My name is Brandon Finney, uh, former state representative from Rochester, who is currently campaigning for city council, Ward Four in Rochester, and I'm happy to be the first guest on Abstract Transmissions. And uh, this is Cuffy, and, and this is Deagle, and we're gonna uh, bid you farewell. Uh, yes. I thank you for joining us on our first uh, transmission. That transmission. Is- I like that. Yeah. Well, I'm drinking <laughs> Abs- some some some. some, some, some some IPA and oh, some uh, oh, yeah, Black Barrel black Jameson. Barrel yes. I've actually, this has helped you know, having the glass of, yeah. uh, of... And that was my thought, too. I'm get, Each week I'm going to get a different bottle, so I have something, a different selection, depending on what the yeah. person, the guest wants to drink, you mm-hmm. know, have that flexibility and, yeah. and all that. And, uh, yeah, if you join us, you get a little bit of free whiskey, so... Yes. Yeah, I think but, I might come here every week then. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> You're always welcome back, man. All right. Thanks All for right. coming. Yeah. Thanks I'll talk to you guys later. Have, have a good night. We will uh, see you folks next week. 
Uh, yes. Abstract there, abstract here. 